hold mm -hmm. the Islamic people together as as one. I'm, that would be the five pillars, babe, for the for the, the most five. part. And the Declaration of Faith would be the, best, the the largest one. There is one God. That is God. You know, and Muhammad is a prophet. And so that would be the uniting one. Regardless of what mm -hmm. sect they all exactly. the five concepts hold them together. Mm -hmm. oh. And but also they can have different interpretations of them. But the major and the one that sticks on all Islam is there's one God and his prophet is Muhammad. And that's very, you know, that's a very brief statement of the faith, um, and that's what it's stuck by. Um, but they adhere to that. Now, um, in that there is also like the Malek, the Sharif, which kind of broke off from the Malek. Um, we have Hanarafi, H-A-N-A-F-I, founded in Baghdad, um, a system that favored Muslim empires such as the Ottomans. So you have the certain groups kind of mix it in with uh, more political, even though they're kind of mixed together, which I'll get to later because I don't want to get off track. <laughs> um, and then you would have something that, uh, like the Hannibal, not meaning the person, but in a, in a sound similar, uh, founded in the mid uh, the mid ninth century, which is the most strict version of it. Um, tradition started in Saudi Arabia. And then so, switch again, please. Um, Hanno actually spelled H-A-N-B-A-L-I. Hanbal. 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 Thank you. If, if you got the bed, if you can sit, bring it to the place, because I'm just like, oh, okay. So, um, and then those are the, uh, at least the four major-ish ones that kind of sprung out, out of the Sunni tradition. Um, the Shia tradition, which is the, um, focuses around inspiration from the historical figure hereditary, um, which is the more, uh, minority, um, we have the what are called the Twelvers, um, and I could not pronounce it if I, yeah, it's Asharia, uh, it's A-S-H-A-R-I-Y-A-H, which is a large group in the, um, the Shia community. Um, this is what we see in Iran, for the most part, is the strong thought of Iran. And they believe that the 12th Imam is in the line of Muhammad will come back. So there's a hidden Imam. That's, if you've ever heard that concept, the hidden Imam, um, that he will come back because he's wandering the earth, hidden, and he will come back and um, basically he'll be referred to as like the Al Mahdi or the Mahdi, there was a guy in Africa who was referred to that he was a great leader and they thought he was that guy that he was. <laughs> That's a different story altogether. If you want to watch, there's a good movie about it. Um, I, the name escapes me, but I'll remember it by the time we finish. <laughs> um, there's also a group called the Seveners, which are in the same group as the uh, Shia, which is heaven. Um, <laughs> Ishma Ilya, it's I S M A. Thank you. There, there we go. There we go. I S who? It's I S M A uh, accent mark I L I Y A H. And remember, these words are transliteration. They can be spelled many different ways. Um, but they hold that the son of the sixth Imam, after Ali, um, who died before his father, it's like this whole big thing, was okay. The seventh Imam. Once that happened, once one of the prophet's sons in the lineage, somebody died and there's no more. Right. And it kind of ended there. Their belief is that once we got to the seven, um, they died off because they were killed or they just met their demise. Then we have a group which is called the Druze, which is mostly in Lebanon and the Syrian region. Um, uh, and basically started around 1021. And they take their name from their first leader, Al Drusi. And uh, it's a smaller group that is in, mostly concentrated now just in Lebanon, because in Syria they're not really happy, you know. They're not happy with anybody in the Middle East right now, so it isn't really, they're just kind of collected in certain parts of the and they move around. Um, so if they weren't accepted, they kind of move over here, or over here, or over here. 
But at the moment, they're kind of in the region of, uh, they're around Lebanon and the surrounding little connecting countries. Did you call them what again? Druze, with a Z. Druze? Uh, D-R-U-Z-E. D-R-U-Z-E. D R U Z E. Oh yeah, there were actually some units in the Israeli army that were exclusively Druze. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have the Awatis. Am I pronouncing that right? Or close to it? Awatis. Wahhabis. Wahhabis. There we go. Um, this is Syria for the most part. This was founded in Syria, and it incorporated elements of Christianity. Um, such as Jesus' resurrection into the faith, mm -hmm. and so it's another minority within it. So as we see along the lines, is you know it just kind of starts to develop through different uh, religious leaders, um, but not necessarily was from the beginning. These are the people we think of when you hear people say, "Oh, well, they like the Virgin Mary." <coughs> these are the people you. These are the ones they're talking about, um, but they are. In, in, a minority, and they're basically in Syria. And if I'm not mistaken, I think um, the current sort of quasi, sort of almost still leader, but hanging on power in Syria is um, of this group, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. But Shahr al is al Okay, yeah. And we have um, Zaidis. Um, which is the most conservative group of the Shias, mainly uh, founded in Yemen. So those were so they're basically regionally air, air, uh, in the areas. Um, their name comes from uh, the fifth Shah Imam, which who was eventually deposed. So they're they're a small group there. Now there is another group. There are other smaller groups that kind of like you know all over the place, and there are some groups that aren't really connected, but and may you know some. Sort of fashion, you have um, a word that I would not even attempt to pronounce. Um, <laughs> Ibadiyara, Yaha, I B A D I Y Y A H. Basically, it was a split before the Sunni and Shia split. Um, and they take, as I was talking about, the Prophet's wife's family's lineage and kind of go down to that region. Um, and they see themselves as preserving the, the true teachings of uh, the Prophet. And these are usually the nomadic people uh, in the Arabic, uh, in Arabia and the desert regions and things like that. But they're a very, very small minority. What are, what are the Kurds? The Kurds are... So they don't get along with the Shia or the Sufis? Well, they're kind of a mix. Yeah, yeah they are a mix, yes. They're, 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 they have a little bit of different version of interpretation. And they are considered Muslims, but with their own, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know the name of their sect. Or well, they're like like it? like you were talking about. They're kind of mixed yeah. up. So they they're the conflicts come a little bit more. They're contemporary to these, but at the same time, they're at this point more divided along uh, regional lines. Yeah, the Kurds don't get along with anybody else. Yeah, the, the, yeah, it's. Yeah, the Kurdistani region is they're 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 very they're hold their own and they're good, they're yeah, allies with Kurds. That's more of an ethnic group, isn't it? The it, it is. Yeah. It is an ethnic group. Mm -hmm. um, so after we kind of gone through that, and we sort of had the a brief thing of the life of Muhammad because we're reaching ending. So we'll go to we did the branches, and we'll kind of go what with about, the. What about Sufi? They are a kind of a. It's like a what do you have to Sufi. Sufi. Um, you would sometimes hear them as the whirling dervishes because that's one, there's a dance there for Sudan. Um, and basically, well, I can't remember which branch it falls out of. Do you do you remember? Or? It's it's more aligned with the Sunnis. But and they, are, they have a more milder look out of, like, I don't know if you know, Dr. Farhan Katafaz, he's one. And they are kind of a, not the extreme. Yeah, they, they they represent the modern version of Islam. They're they're very there's a lot of beautiful poetry that comes out of them. They're in quotation marks mystical, I guess you yeah. could say. Um, more along the long lines of uh, my relationship with God, but not. There's it's more moderate and it's more. They have more philosophical elements that we would consider, that we would understand a little bit more um, than the rest of Islam. But they are a, 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 a 
fairly small minority. However, that is growing recently. Um, but kind of pulling down a little bit further, um, because I want to get this part in because it's a lot of the questions people have at the moment. Uh, the philosophical and theological understanding. Now, when I say this point, I'm using very general, because like I said, there's lots of them in different groups and have different interpretations. Um, for uh, uh, one of them is in the thought of the Quran and the Hadith that God can change his mind. Meaning, not, not the way we think of it. Oh, I repent, I will not destroy you. You know, that type of thing we think of the Old Testament. But meaning that there wouldn't be an absolute, as in Ten Commandments, absolute. God, later on in the Quran, could say, oh, I decided that's not good anymore, we're going to do this. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a process of abnegation or abnegation. So something that's said in the beginning of the Quran, and if it's correct, if it's contradicted in the later, um, you know, part of it, like maybe, you know, many times down, if it says the opposite, you follow that one, you don't follow this one. So it's like a, it's a, it's basically if this is, you know, tolerate this, then several lines later it goes back and says, well, God has decided it should be this. Then you go with that. And if that is overturned later, then you go with the, the latest interpretation. And you just kind of, yeah, yes, sir. And you just kind of keep going on the line of that one. Another big concept that um, is, um, I'm going to use a philosophical term. Some will get it, some will not, but I'll explain it. <laughs> um, there is no such thing as a second cause. Meaning that, okay, from a Christian point of view, God has given me free will and the ability to do as I please, basically. So I take initiative to take this marker and put it there. I did that. Although God gave me you know, my body, my intellect, my will, I did that at my own free will. However, in believing in not, if you believe that there are no such thing as second causes, I did not move this of my own free will. Allah made me move it. So therefore, Allah oh, made me move it. And that's a very simplified version of it. It's kind of like a very distilled version of um, predestination. Yeah. Um, and not in the path that thought of when you yeah. work as a separate So they say there is no such thing as free will work and basically puppets. In a sense, yeah. Um, so, so, you know, this is the illustration of the moving of the pen. I move the pen or Allah move this pen. Um, one of my philosophy professors um, basically said, well, an understanding is if there's a big either a disaster or, and also this can be up to interpretation depending on which sect it is, but I'm just, you know, I'm highlighting some of the big general pan views that um, destruction of something, that will, well that was the will of Allah. Somebody died, that was the will of Allah. Um, so it was 9-11 uh, is the will of Allah. You know, various things would be just the will of Allah and that's what it is and that's what it is. Inshallah. Isn't that what it was? Yeah. Inshallah. Uh, Inshallah. In God's willing. Yeah, God. Yeah, God willing. That's why kind of it's like. Did he say wait, wait. No. <laughs> so, so, uh, so it's kind of so in that there's a lot of take. You know, there's not really any. It's the reason I hesitate to say it's so hard and firm because there have been so many people, so many uh, philosophers, which I will not get into for the sake of time, which I can come back and say do it another oh, time. Please. But um, there have been philosophical understandings of, well, maybe we shouldn't believe it this way. But usually what happened is that um, when the philosophers got to that point, they started looking at um, the works of the Greek philosophers and stuff and getting these ideas, and various groups did not like that. And it's like, okay, they're verging into heresy, and then that kind of gets squashed and goes away. And so every so often that kind of crops up, and you'll have little splits of various things. But in the vast majority, um, you know, in general, because I don't want to pin every single Muslim on the planet as this, but it's, you know, if something happens to the will of Allah, there's nothing you can do about it, that's the end of it. Um, they, um, okay. Now when we get into things like the, well, government, theology, and politics. Now, when we look at um, specific groups, um, specifically, well, I'm going to put this one. <laughs> there, in 
the various understandings, you have groups who will go with the more um, generally secular view of government. You know, you know, we would consider something like separation of church and state in a way. And then you have um, the not so much separated. They believe there's one and the same, and you can't separate politics, government, and religion. Well, second, without a second cause, which I don't see how they could have it separate. It, 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 gets, it, gets, it gets really complicated indeed. But basically what happens is, I believe it is, oh yeah, it, it would be the, um, the Shia who typically do this version. Um, Which version is that? Uh, the one heredit hereditary. Yeah, but I mean, they're, they're, they're the ones that are secular? No, no, no. no. just the opposite. Just the opposite. Yeah. The Sunni, <coughs> the Sunni you know, would, you know, they're, they're okay, we'll kind of, it's okay, but there are different views on that side. So when you see a lot of groups that are coming from uh, the Shia tradition, they want to integrate politics and religion because they believe it's one thing and everything should be under uh, the, the law of Islam, which is when you kind of mix all the books together, uh, you know, put them together in a big collection, that what we refer to as Shia Sharia <coughs> and the understanding of that law of Islamic law and how you understand and interpret it. And again, that's how it depends on what sect you are. Um, but through that we see like Iran, like the, uh, the revolution Iran, the they, they would be um, the Ayatollah, things like that, where they're kind of more very much also uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. In the beginning, that was his manifesto statement when he, um, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head at the moment, I can look it up, but I'll get back to you on that one. Um, he was Egyptian, and he basically wrote kind of a little manifesto, and saying that um, the world will come peaceful under the peace of Islam, meaning that there'll maybe conflict at first, and everyone gradually, once everything comes under Islam, um, there'll be peace, and but government, everything should be meshed together and under be the law of Islam, or Sharia law, and um, you see, that's where we get a lot of the radicalism. Um, uh, through these various groups, um, like Hamas, um, uh, ISIS is the most extreme version. Al Qaeda even considers them crazy. So I mean, it's, <laughs> you keep going up, but it get, you know it keeps getting more and more and more. And usually, those you see kind of branching up from that. And the biggest thing that studying this that I've seen that is a minority of extremists tend to will get into power. And everybody else will just either fall into step or just, yeah. or just kind of go through the mo like in countries like in Iran, not everybody wanted a revolution. It was a minority, or they want a revolution, but they didn't want it in that way, because as we see to the past, the Shah wasn't exactly the right um, And which has kind of led to what we're seeing now, kind of the parsing out of we're kind of dividing ourselves into Shia and um, Sunni in the Middle East right now. And they're coming, you know, buddy buddy allies, and then as politics make strange bedfellows, Russia, um, and everybody kind of coming together and dividing along those lines. So that's why you have Iranians in Syria and all this stuff kind of mixing up and everywhere. And Israel's sitting there like, gosh, crap. So <laughs> we have all these things now, and we're kind of seeing it happen again because after the first and second world wars, the fall of the Ottoman Empire, which kind of would keep everybody under their thumb, you be quiet, or we'll just destroy your village. You know, a very ruthless manner of doing things. Now that there is not uh, a structure, because there not, has not been exactly anything other than various empires throughout the history of the Middle East. So there was never any precedent for um, what we would consider a Republican or a democ democratic system. And so it's kind of gone into, it's basically just brought itself into a chaotic situation. Um, and basically I've run out of time. But, uh, but one of the main things that, uh, well, I'll actually, that would be the main conflict issues right now. The people who, you'll have the different people, like uh, the Khalifs would be the ones who do religious instruction or, you know, help interpret for the villages. But for the most part, it's divided up into whatever group you are. And some can have very great feuds with the other ones, and some they can be just kind of apathetic one another. Yeah, you believe this and you believe this. But it depends on where you live and what group you belong to. 
And right now it's kind of breaking down to the pre-Ottoman Empire situation, meaning that it's um, ethnic group against ethnic group of um, that hold specific beliefs in Shia or in Sunni beliefs. And you will even get occasionally we have Sunni against Sunni because it's even do different concepts of it, and or Shia against Shia, and different concepts, but they begin to sort of lie each other with each other in the thought that um, anything that was used to belong, and we're talking more of the um, <clears throat> the Shia version, um, hereditary, that where we get the whole idea of them wanting to take back um, proper you know lands and stuff that were once conquered because they believe it's only temporary that's, that they were taken back so that they would like to go out and spread. And that's a whole another can of worms, another <laughs> tradition. So it's, it's very complicated and very difficult to get in, but that is just basically the skim and quick Cliff Notes version that of what it is and I am willing to stay after until about 11.15 to answer questions. Um, so as in group, as in personally, but but I have in a, in a very, very tiny nutshell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.